Hello everyone and welcome back to a very special episode of Star Trek Sundays because today I'm going to be taking a look at the Star Trek The Motion Picture X0616 scale Admiral Kirk figure. If you're asking yourself what makes this figure so special, well, it comes down to the fact that this was produced in very, very limited numbers, and the moulds have now since been destroyed, so that makes this a one-time release for a very limited run, making this quite a well-sought-after, very valuable item in the future, and quite difficult to get hold of. I was very fortunate to get my hands on one. As I said, these were produced in limited numbers, and they sold out incredibly quickly, in fact, within minutes in the UK. So let's start by looking at the packaging, and I have to say I really love this packaging. This is definitely a, another level up for the X06 releases we've seen so far. This is not a slip case, this is a hard case, and I love the image they've got here. They've accurately reproduced the Star Trek The Motion Picture poster, and of course superimposed the action figure head in the central column there. I think this looks absolutely gorgeous, it looks fantastic on display, and I love the colours on display here. I just think this looks very, very attractive. The background star field wraps right the way around the packaging and on the side panel we can see the Starfleet insignia gold embossed which looks quite nice. If we flip it on the other side we can see the X06 branding, not an awful lot going on here but still pretty attractive with that gold trim uh, at the top and bottom of this packaging. Then finally if we look at the reverse, not an awful lot here to be honest, we do have that new Star Trek logo, that new branding which I've talked about in other videos, I really like this, I love these three colours here with the Star Trek universe, I think it looks really nice and of course there's some small prints, otherwise not an awful lot going on here to be honest. The outer casing is locked in place with a magnet, but if we take the side panel and lift it up, we can fold it open to see some credits on the inside, no real image here, but we do have this rather lovely inlay card which accurately recreates the exterior docking port for the Enterprise. And behind that, of course, we can see the figure safely secured in his foam packaging there. One bit of advice I was given with this figure that I want to pass on is to perhaps handle this figure with gloves, especially when it comes to the central part of the tunic, which is white. As you can see, this is quite a brilliant white, and it will smudge very easily. Let's take a look at that all-important head sculpt. I have to say, I think they've done a really good job with this sculpt. I think this is very clearly William Shatner from the motion picture. I think they've cut his likeness very nicely here. I think they've got that look on his face just right. And I think for the most part, this is a pretty striking resemblance. Now, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's probably the closest I've ever seen in this scale. Now, one thing I did notice that I thought was a little bit odd is the colouring of his hair. In the film, you will know, obviously, it is quite a dark, a very dark black black or brown, whereas on this figure it's got almost gold highlights running through it to give it more of a lighter shade of brown colour which is interesting. Another point of contention with this figure has been the colouring of the costume, as you'll see on the figure it definitely has a greenish hue, whereas on screen it definitely resembles much more of a blue shade. Now, the reason for this apparently was because they were opting to copy the costume as it appeared on set, the actual original costume, rather than how it appeared on screen. So, a slight difference there and something to be aware of. But, it still looks absolutely fantastic, because the details in this costume are pretty phenomenal. Now, it's not an overly complicated costume, it is one that I've always quite liked, and it's a shame that it only made one appearance <laughs> in, in the classic films. But I love the details they've managed to draw out of this. The collar is high, and it looks really nicely sewn together. We can see individual details when it comes to the unique com badge there, looks really, really nice. The shoulder strap, although, to be honest, I did think that looked a little bit out of proportion, maybe looks a little bit too large here, weirdly enough, but uh, it still looks very, very nice. And of course, at the central belt there, we have that sort of buckle, which looks really, really nice and incredibly faithful to what we see on screen. You'll also notice that on the cuffs, we also have the rank insignia there, which uh, looks really nice. And again, this is a separate material. It's catches the light beautifully, it's like a proper solid gold colour and it's very very reflective. So I think all in all the overall presentation is gorgeous. Likewise if we look at the boots this colour merges seamlessly into the trouser leg, they've done a really nice job of this and of course the uh, lower leg will actually wrap around with elastic to the boot so that makes sure that it's taut and tight and is uh, in proportion. So this looks really very very nice. You'll notice that the actual base that he comes with is a transporter base so this looks quite nice and we'll come back to this a little bit later. 
Looking at the articulation, and you'll have to forgive me because I'm being very, very gentle with this figure because <laughs> I don't want to take any chances with him. His head will move from side to side and it will move forwards and backwards. There is, of course, a ball joint at the base of the neck that allows a huge range of motion that allow him to turn his head from side to side, lean it left to right, and of course, bend it forwards and backwards a pretty healthy distance as well. Now, he's got ball joints in the shoulders, of course, so those arms will lift up and out. There is a bicep swivel, so those arms will rotate rotate all the way around and there is a double joint at the elbow so that hand can be pressed all the way back to meet his head if you want it to. As you can see there's a ball joint at the wrist so the hand will rotate all the way around and it will also hinge forwards and backwards as well. Now there is a ball joint in the waist that will allow the waist to spin from side to side, lean left and right, and even bend forwards and backwards. Again, I'm being very, very gentle with mine, so you've probably not seen the full range of motion, but trust me, it's all there. Ball joints at the hips mean the legs will kick out to the side. There is a complementary thigh swivel as well, so again, he can rotate his upper leg all the way around. The legs will kick forwards, they'll kick backwards. There's double joints at the knee, so that lower leg can kick all the way back. And there is a hinge at the boot, and of course, you can also spin this from side to side. It has a swivel there as well. Now, this release is massively pared down when it comes to accessories. He's quite lightweight in this area. All he comes with is an extra pair of fists and this Star Trek insignia pin badge. This is a metal pin badge. It's actually quite large in size and it looks really very nice and it's quite weighty in your hand. But it has a dual function. Yes, it can be worn as a pin badge for yourself or you can place it on the display stand. Now, there aren't any instructions that come with this figure to show you how to set this display stand up, so I thought it might be helpful if I run through it with you, just in case you weren't sure. You need to start by removing the plastic clips, of course, so you'll see the two pins. You line this up with the foam insignia that's in the box, and of course, you slide it into place. Once that's matched up, I did want to point out that you'll see at the very base there is this plastic tab with an indented line. This will be used to fold it into place in a moment. You will also notice you come with two S-shaped clips. Make sure that you take the straight edge and slide that into the base so that the S-shape is sticking outwards. Stick them both into place and then take hold of your insignia, look for that plastic tab and bend it ever so slightly so that it will slide into place in between the gap of the outer S-joint. And once it's in place, I have to say, this looks pretty impressive. This is a really nice finish because it's such a heavy, solid quality piece of metal and it's cast in this glorious gold. It catches the light beautifully and it really sets off this figure when he's on display. You'll also notice there's another piece in the box. This is a separate clip that you can clip into the side of this transporter base and then you can connect this with future releases. So we do know, of course, that the Spock is on the way and you can connect these bases to create the transporter. Now, I have to admit when this figure was first announced, I was in two minds whether to pick him up because I didn't like the fact that he was so pared down and yet the cost wasn't really uh, much reduced, certainly in the UK, to what you'd pay for a figure with lots and lots of accessories. But I haven't seen this in the flesh, I'm actually super thrilled with it. I think it's definitely worth the money. The overall presentation of the packaging to the actual presentation of the figure when he's on display with that wonderful insignia pin badge and just the overall look of the costume is really, really impressive. I have to say, I really, really like this figure. It's one of my top figures of 2022 and I really, really like what they've done with it. And it's now got me super pumped for the release of Spock. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.